A couple days ago, I was watching a video about a programmer who got a hold of one of these uh, scam call center numbers and decided to put a stop to it. So what they did was they wrote a script that would inundate this call center with uh, fake robocalls from random numbers. And the purpose of that was to overwhelm the call center and they would not be able to take any calls or messages from potential victims that could lose their money. I think it was a really interesting application of the, intel the, the knowledge that they had. And um, the outcome is pretty funny uh, at the expense of the scammers. And I'll put the link in the description below for that video. But in this video, I'll be look, taking a look at one of those websites that tells you that your computer's infected and actually they caught this website today. So it's fresh information. Um, we'll take a look at one of those websites, de deconstruct it a little bit and see what's going on on the inside. Okay, so let's just go to the website itself. And here we have this wonderful Microsoft. box Your and Windows alerted. Defender alert and you know the following data will be compromised if you continue, you know, doom and gloom. And you'll actually notice that the browser has actually crashed. The browser is uh, completely frozen. You can't close it. You can't uh, close the tab. You can't close the window. The only way you can actually close it is by going to the task manager and removing the process. Now, you can actually see what's happening here. It may, might give you a little hint on what's going on. You can see two processes here that have quite a lot of memory allocated to them. And one of them is kind of going up a little, by a little bit. The other one is going up by a lot. So the other one might not, be might not be related or might be related, but the one with the almost four gigs of memory allocated to it uh, is the one that's causing the problem. So obviously we want to close that one and uh, move on with our lives. So of course, to protect myself, I'm gonna go into my settings and I'm gonna add this website so that no, none of the JavaScript that's loaded by the page is actually run, but I can still load the page and view it. There's just no JavaScript. So let's go back to that website and let's see what exactly is going on. Critical alert from Microsoft. Your computer has alerted us that it is infected with the virus and so obviously we want to mute this tab because you don't want to listen to it the, the audio actually repeats over and over and over again so uh, it'd be really annoying not having that muted so muted it and now we can actually still interface with the screen the nothing is frozen there's no excess memory allocated that's because obviously there's no javascript being run so first of all i have to actually reload the page in order to get to get the uh, developer tools to see all the uh, requests and deliveries that have happened and everything has actually been loaded in 110 milliseconds and that's probably because I've cached it but anyways there's two things that are loaded well three things that are loaded the first thing is the Windows icon of course you got to make the site feel legit so you got to put Windows icon on it and a fake close image so obviously that close button was never ever intended to be used and they actually put the time and effort into call it a fake close button. Let's go back to the request. So in the request, we can actually see what the server replied with. So here, here we have the response and we have the web page and a whole bunch of things. We have a robots uh, meta so that, that tells the any robots that are from like Google or Yahoo not to index the page. And the second thing, of course, is the jQuery library being loaded, which I don't actually know if it is needed. Uh, they have the text that's displayed in the in the window, as well as the text that's displayed in the background. Uh, Zeus virus detected in your computer. Obviously, for those that are not aware, there probably is not any Zeus virus detected in your computer. And if there was, your web browser definitely wouldn't be telling you, especially not at a domain that's list that's over there you know zero five six one five etc dot review and we have the audio part which is uh, playing from a file from the server and it is file slash error dot mp3 and that is just playing on a loop this is the main meat and potatoes the script that's happening on the server or on the on the client side and we'll look into that a little bit later but first let's take a look at this unique piece of script that looks kind of garbled and jumbled uh, this is actually, for those of you who are web developers, quite familiar. It is the Google Analytics. Well, actually, you can see it right there. It says Google, An Google Analytics object. All right, I'm going to paste the code from the web page, and let's just take a look at it. Uh, first things first, we should do a quick auto format to see what is going on with a little bit more clarity. 
And the first line is a variable called text and it's being assigned to a long string. Yeah, we don't really need that because it's not even used further on in the code. So let's just delete that. The next thing we see is another variable that looks like it's got a hexadecimal variable name. Not sure why that is. Possibly it was a result of their own minification process. Uh, but it's got an underscore in front of it. So it's definitely a variable name. Nothing, nothing fancy here. Just a horrible variable name. And then the next thing is we have a bunch of strings, which a bunch of escape characters in it, which this basically means it'll take the ASCII character 6F, whatever that is, and then it'll put it into the string. So we can take this and put it into an ASCII converter, which I have right here already prepared. And of course, I don't want to look at Premiere. I want to look at this. Okay, there you go. Uh, I want to take that and just throw it in. Oh, uh, uh, before I get into that, uh, this thing wants your ASCII to be in 0x format instead of a slash x. So we're just going to quickly do a find and replace. Oh, look, it's already done. <laughs> you might be able to tell I've done this before. The first time I made this video is a little bit too long and I decided to do it again because uh, I want to not waste people's time because it's really not that complicated. Okay. Bam, look at that, magic. Uh, we have <laughs> all that ASCII now converted into something that is legible. It's quite surprising the first time that I did this, uh, that it actually it actually worked. I, I expected to get something a little bit more cryptic, but there we go. First thing is done, next thing, I'll do the same. Now the next thing to do is to take a look at these variable names. So whenever I'm debugging things, or trying to figure out what's going on in a program or reverse engineering things. Just do what you do in Sudoku. You, you give it your best guess and then you can change it later. So my best guess is, you know, this is on before unload. That's warning, return value, push state, more return value. This looks like something like a function. So we're just gonna rename this function one. and rename the second one function two. Okay, so we've now actually gotten rid of a lot of those weird variable names through that. Uh, let's quickly just go and do a replace for all these things. So if you look here, we have window function one and it's using the index zero of the array. So that's on before unload. So if we just move this here and replace that, you can see that, hey, that's the same thing as just doing like a, a dot notation, just having a dot this dot on before unload. And it's assigning window dot on before unload to this function. And window is actually one of the native browser variables that we can tap into in JavaScript. So I'm gonna do that again with the rest of these functions because you see it's got function one and then index one, so it should be warning. Function one, index two, as return value. So I'm gonna go through this entire code and do a kind of a replace for all of these. All right, I've replaced all of those uh, references to these variables. So actually you can see that this one is no longer used. Let's get rid of it. And the function two is also no longer used, so we can get rid of that line. The next thing we see is that this Windows window on before unload is actually being assigned twice. So once up here and then further down here. Not exactly sure why they did that, but obviously the first one will be overwritten by the second one. And on top of that, it appears that this these two functions are identical. So I'm just gonna delete the second one because they're the same function. Okay, next thing that we're gonna do is take a look at the, these variables or these, these names here and we wanna make it something more legible. So this one's being returned farther down here. So let's just call it ret. 
Okay, the next thing is this function parameter is being used here, so we'll just call it params, or just param. Next thing is to take a look at this stuff here. It's just a string and an empty string at that, and it's being assigned farther down there, so we'll just call it string. The next thing is a variable that starts at zero in a for loop and is incremented. So we'll call this, we'll just rename this to the classic I. So we've actually eliminated, well, except for this one, let's get rid of that. It's not even used in this function. So we've eliminated all that cryptic text and we have something that is just plain vanilla JavaScript and it's pretty legible. So let's actually take a look at what's happening in this function. Oh, of course, uh, this part down here, this uh, commented section is identical to the stuff up there. For some reason, it's commented. So let's just get rid of that for some more clarity's sake. Okay, so we have this window.onload function being called when the browser loads the page and it immediately calls the function free. The function free is here and it has a variable string which is assigned an empty string and then we have a for loop here which starts at zero goes to a hundred million and is incremented by one on every loop and then it takes that string and reassigns it as itself concatenated with whatever i is as a string and then it goes to the history and this is another one of those browser variables and uses a function push state and this is actually, I read up on the Mozilla uh, JavaScript documentation, and this is actually not the right way of using it, according to them, but it satisfies the, the purpose of this function anyways, which is to overload your computer uh, with, with uh, memory allocation. It's just, your computer will run out of memory because, because of this. So why that is, I'll go into it in just one sec. So... First loop, we have an empty string, i is assigned zero, and basically what happens is that empty string concatenated with zero will result with string, which is just zero. And then it takes that string and then pushes it using this push date function to the history. And it just pushes the string on there. Not a big deal. Sec that's just the first loop though. Second loop, it then takes that string, which is just zero, and adds a one to it. So it's now gonna be zero one. Okay, still not a big deal. <laughs> it's gonna push it to the history. Third loop. I think you guys can see what's happening here. So we're getting incrementally bigger, and <laughs> after many millions more of iterations, we're going to end up with something like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, etc. All the way until 99,999,999. Whoa, that's a big number. Especially because your computer will never get there, most likely because it will run out of memory and freeze the screen and crash your browser. There's this window.onBeforeUnload function here. And what is that? Well, I did a little bit of research and I found out that this is the function that programmers use whenever they want to prevent people from leaving a page too early. So there are some good uses of this. For example, when you are on Twitter or on Facebook and you're writing a tweet or you're writing a post and you put something in and you forget to send it and you press close. Well, this function allows you to say to the user, hey, wait a second, you have some sort of unsaved data on your page or you have a, you didn't finish writing your tweet, you know, do you want to navigate away? This is the function that you would use. Obviously, in this case, <laughs> they're using it for a little bit more nefarious purposes. They're just trying to be more annoying to you. So that's an explanation of why your browser hangs up and doesn't want to respond to you and you need to force close it or use your task manager to close it. And it's not sending your information to a far off server. It's not hacking your computer. It's not doing any permanent damage. It's just being plain annoying. 
Well, I hope you guys have learned something from this video. I know I have. And hopefully you'll stay tuned for the next one. Okay, see you guys later.